It's me, Graham. Have you ever had any kind of music or video player with surround sound? It's supposed to feel like the sound is all over the room. It, it literally surrounds you. That's the kind of system I just installed. All that's left to do is give it a little test. That way I'll have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. So let's see if I'm surrounded. I'll just press play here. I can hear it here. I can hear it here. I can hear it here too. And here, and here. Here, 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 here. Whew. Don't look now, but I think we're surrounded. In today's story, you'll hear about something else you're surrounded by. Don't worry, it's a good thing. You know where I'll be. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. When Paul wrote his famous letters to the believers in Rome, he declared an incredible truth. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. That not even angels or demons, not present or future or any other powers can separate us. Not the highest places or the lowest or anything in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Now, let's see how this truth might play out in our lives today. Ben Martin stared hard at the page of his book, trying to force the letters to stay in place. Jason stepped through the gate. He br he dr oh. Tearing off his glasses, Ben hurled them onto the bed, rubbing his aching eyes. His mom's voice floated from downstairs. Everything okay? Yeah, fine. Ben picked up his book again and tried once more to focus. He drew... Br rift... <sighs> it was useless. Words and letters shifted, traded places with the lines above and below. This is totally impossible. Ben slammed the book down and stalked out of his room and down the stairs. In the kitchen, Mom was making lunch. How's the book? Great, awesome, fantastic. If you're stuck, Mr. Spinelli said that it's okay to- I'm gonna be the only one in sixth grade who hasn't made it through a single book on the summer reading list. Ben, you know this has nothing to do with how smart you are. Ben shoved open the back door without hearing the rest of Mom's pep talk. Tell your brother it's almost time for lunch. Ben found his brother Ty in the backyard. Wow, fence is looking good. Ty was home for a month before his last year of college. He was such a good carpenter that his dad was paying him to build a new backyard fence. <laughs> yeah. Lunch ready? Almost. Ben rode into the hammock strewn between two oak trees and stared into the leaves. The shifting lights and shadows reminded him of the jumping letters in his book. He squeezed his eyes shut. You finished Jason's game yet? No, because I'm the world's slowest reader. Uh, not true. It's just the... Uh... <sighs> Dyslexia, yeah, I know. Ben's parents were finally relieved to have a diagnosis that explains Ben's trouble in school. But for Ben, dyslexia seemed like a giant weight pinning him down. I kept thinking that maybe one day it would just all click into place, that, that reading would just happen like it does for everybody else. But now I know it's never going to be easy. Dyslexia makes it take forever to learn. Mm. Well, lots of people with dyslexia do amazing things. It's easy for you to say you're perfect at everything. Huh. Here, pound a few nails. You'll feel better. Ty held out a hammer and gestured toward a nail sticking out of a newly placed picket. Ben shrugged out of the hammock and took the hammer. Keep your eye right on the nail head. Yeah. Did mom ever tell you I almost dropped out of college first semester freshman year? What? <laughs> no. Yeah, I made some really Mm, unwise choices. I was failing classes, and I knew Mom was worried, and Dad was super mad, and I felt completely worthless. 
Ben forgot about the hammer and gave the tie in amazement. No way, you're the smartest guy I know. Oh, I was just gonna quit, but I had this friend on my hall, Leo, and he wouldn't leave me alone. He just kept telling me that no matter how much of a zero I felt like, I was still loved by God. That nothing I do and nothing that happens can ever change that. Huh, so that just fixed stuff? <laughs> nope, but Leo kept showing up and I finally started reading some of the verses he gave me just to get him off my back and it started to sink in. Ty took out his phone and tapped a few times. Mm. Here's my favorite one. Ty started to hand over his phone, but saw Ben wince. I'll read it. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any powers can separate us. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Ben swapped the hammer from one hand to the other and back again. I think I've heard that before. It's kind of wild with all the angels and demons and stuff. Yeah, it's different when you put yourself in it. I am absolutely sure that no dumb choice or failing grade or feeling worthless now or ever can make God stop loving me. Like fill in the blank. Yeah, sure. Ben took a couple good whacks at the nail until it was pounded firmly in place. So I am um, absolutely certain that dyslexia and feeling worthless and summer reading lists. None of that can make God stop loving you, now or ever. Yeah, okay. Somehow, Ben felt a little lighter. What do you think of Jason's game? Oh, it's awesome. Other than the reading part. <laughs> Ty tapped on his phone again. I'm buying you the audiobook. Then you can listen while you read. Cool, thanks. I'm hungry. The two brothers headed inside for lunch. For once, Ben wasn't worried about the year ahead. In fact, he was looking forward to getting back to his book. The Apostle Paul wrote, nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus our Lord has done. When Jesus died on the cross, it saved you from your sins. And when you believe in Jesus, you could have a relationship with God that lasts forever. And God made all that possible because he loves you. I mean, God loves you here, 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 and here, and here, and up here. God loves you when you're good, when you're not so good, when you feel all alone, and when you're performing on stage in front of a bunch of people, when things don't go the way you expect. Nothing can separate you from God's amazing, never-ending love. And that's the one thing for you to remember today. God loves you no matter what. You are literally surrounded by God's love. So take a minute, go outside maybe, someplace quiet, and just think about how much God loves you. Hopefully, that will give you a little confidence. I'll see you around.